May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be aligned with your love, O oh God, our strength, our courage, our healing. Amen. I was feeling as I was coming to church today that every Sunday in the Episcopal Church is considered to be either Easter Sunday or a little Easter, and I'm feeling it the, today on this wonderful St. Luke's Sunday. I want to preach about the deep healing on this Sunday of St. Luke, the physician and gospel writer. And the first story in this sermon has to do with a particular phrase that stuck in my mind this week, this past week, and a telephone call. A friend of my soul from another state and another time in my life has struggled with decades with rheumatoid arthritis. I called her last week to learn about some of its particulars because this certain phrase had come into my mind and wouldn't leave. It just wouldn't let me go, this phrase. It persisted in my brain and in my mind and in my spirit. And so I followed the phrase's energy to call my friend and then place it at the beginning of the sermon. The phrase is this, when the body attacks itself. I think that phrase, when the body attacks itself, had announced itself as I was thinking about writing a reflection piece about the movement of the National Mourning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, into Unity Project. We here at St. Luke's will host again tomorrow night 25 houses of worship draped in purple fabric across this nation. We'll be hosting prayers of lament, loss, grief, and mourning led by interfaith leaders and first responders. Please go to our website and register to be physically present or to be present via Zoom at 6 tomorrow night Eastern Standard Time as a national interruption of offering sanity and unity in the midst of this escalating and divisive scorn we're feeling during the pandemic viruses as the election nears. As I mulled over the phrase, when the body attacks itself, I realized that that is one way to think about our national condition. It seems that we're attacking ourselves. In too many places, we are not having an energetic, impassioned discussion of disagreement about policies, which is essential for a healthy democracy. Instead, we are having shouting matches. We are lashing out at one another. We're striking out at one another in blaming, shaming, ad hominem personal attacks, which every high school debater is taught is out of bounds. In my own training with visions, with a visions model for multicultural change, one of the foundational guidelines states no blaming, shaming, and attacking of others or of yourself. So the next step that took place last week before moving toward calling my friend of long standing was to turn to Google. <laughs> when I Googled the words, when the body attacks itself, I was then reminded that those words are the very words used to describe autoimmune diseases. The internet taught me that the healthy immune system normally guards against germs like bacteria and viruses. And when it senses these pathogens, it sends out an army of fighter cells to attack them. That's the genius of our bodies. Normally, the immune system can tell the difference between pathogenic cells and your own cells. But when there is an autoimmune dysfunction called autoimmunity, our immune system mistakenly attacks our own body. 
then the internet named 14 of the many autoimmune diseases, including rheumatoid arthritis. That's when I knew to call my friend. She confirmed my learning so far and told me about when she was first diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis as a young lady. The doctor, now almost four decades ago, told her that she was destined to live in a wheelchair. The doctor said, this will cripple you. Cancel your plans, go to law school. A career in the law is impossible for you. She and her parents were thrown into non-thinking. They complied with the doctor, canceled law school. She immediately underwent treatment for what is called the rage of the bones, she said, because the debilitating pain is not just in the joints, but throughout her entire body. It is a polyarthritis that attacks your entire system. She emphasized it's a systemic disease. But my friend then told me, I fought this autoimmune disease with every part of my being. There is no cure at this point still, but the disease-modifying drugs that AIDS research led to later stopped the damage, stopped the progression of the disease. I am not crippled. I am audacious and beautifully audacious my friend is. Now, all of this description took me to the heart of the matter and the heart of my sermon. This is the sentence that took me there. An autoimmune disease is when there is the inability of an organism to recognize parts of its own body as self. My friends, that is what ails us this morning in our country, in our families, in our relationships. Our nation has a systemic autoimmune disease where we have lost the ability to recognize those with whom we disagree as actually ourselves. I have deep concerns about the climate of toxic divisiveness in our culture now. Culture wars is how it's described. There are many extremes to this toxic divisiveness where even colleagues and family members are attacking, blaming, and shaming one another. I know of one elder who has sent word to one of his nieces that she is no longer welcome at his house because she dared to criticize his candidate in the presidential election. One of the worst examples is the plot to kidnap and kill the governor of Michigan by a white supremacist group. Wherever otherwise good people wear a police officer's uniform and then fears a young black person and kills that person, there is the inability to recognize those as ourselves. There is the reality that a climate of violent, divisive fear, divisiveness, fear mongers are stirring up fear in such a way that more and more people are invited into this autoimmune disease that is threatening to cripple democracy as well as the sense of dignity for vulnerable Americans and people we love. It extends to the culture wars over the process and selection of a new justice for the Supreme Court. How many categories of citizens are being made to feel vulnerable this morning? Today's gospel reading is our patron saint's account of Jesus' inaugural sermon given at his hometown synagogue right after his transformative wrestling match with satanic fear in the wilderness. 
Jesus takes the Isaiah scroll, lifts up the care and liberation for five categories of vulnerability, those who are poor, those held captive, those who are physically and spiritually blind, those who are in prison, and those who simply need a new start, which was what the Jubilee year was designed to bestow to those burdened by any form of oppression, which in our day means those suffering from misogyny, homophobia, and systemic racism, and systemic poverty. Those are they who so often feel that the body of America forgot that they are part of ourself. Now, of course, all of this is at the heart of what we call at St. Luke's Big Love Christianity. And this is the very essence of the hyper-individualism that has infected churchianity for so long and has distorted so much of churchianity and made churchianity bankrupt with no power to unite, heal, or throw off true pathogens of oppression and discrimination and the contributing factors of income immobility. Rather, we are attacking one another not realizing that we are attacking our very selves. That is at the heart of big love and a heart of Jesus. Jesus said, love your neighbor as your very self, for your neighbor is yourself. And if you attack your very self, you have autoimmune disease. You will cripple your own body, i.e. those who are vulnerable and historically disadvantaged. St. Paul gave us that wonderful image of a healthy body. In a healthy body, St. Paul said, the ear cannot say to the eye, I have no need of you. And the arm cannot say to the foot, I have no need of you. I want to go on to state the obvious. The way Christianity has been practiced with the emphasis on individual salvation, whether you as an individual have a personal relationship with Jesus which will save you from hell and send you to heaven, that is bankrupt because at the center Christianity has told a lie and that is that we are separate from one another. We are individualistic. When everything about our original documents, the whole Bible, the biblical texts themselves, have asserted quite loudly that we are not individual selves. If the central core of your worldview is that everyone and everything is an independent and separable substance instead of a part of a one interwoven whole, then you won't be able to be an instrument of healing healing our autoimmunological disease. Big love finds a way is our stewardship theme this year. In other words, you and I give as we believe. If you think we are separate selves, then you'll treat your money and your energy as yourself, as your own. And Deuteronomy tells us that that is absurd. We can't say that anything that we have is our own because everything we have has been a gift from God, including the ability to make resources. If you have entrusted your life even, intuitive, and even intuitively to an understanding that the universe has as its prefix uni, U-N-I, then verse, which means one, then you know that your money and your energy and your very life is not your own, but it all belongs to the whole, to the Holy One and to the one that the Holy One made in the uni verse. And you thereby cannot understand that the blood flowing right now in your ear is blood that will soon be in your toe and it is absurd to think that there is such a thing as toe blood or ear blood or lung blood or eye blood. It's the body's blood 
and my money and my energy and my life is the energy, resources, money, and life of the whole, of big love. It is just as absurd for one tree trunk in my favorite one tree forest called Pando in southern Utah to think that the sap flowing through its stems and leaves this very hour won't be sap that's flowing through a tree trunk 500 yards away about two hours from now. And it's absurd to think that the water in the Sea of Galilee won't be water in the River Jordan two hours from now. The issue, my friends, the resurrection issue is oneness and flow in big love. Only oneness and flow and big love can save us from attacking ourselves because we don't recognize the person whose ideas we find repugnant. We don't recognize that person as myself. Or I would critique the person's ideas, policies, and choices, but not the person. Big love finds a way, my friends, through all this divisiveness, through our autoimmune disease. In big love giving, each of us aligns with the DNA of St. Luke, of St. Luke's, of Jesus, and of God, and says with Jesus this morning, the spirit of our God is upon me and upon my bank account because the Most High has anointed me to bring good news to those who are poor. God has sent me to proclaim liberty to those held captive, recovery of sight to those who are blind, both endly blind and physically blind, and release to those in prison, and to proclaim the year of our God's favor, to proclaim the jubilee year of new starts. And then rolling up the scroll, Jesus gave it back to the attendant, sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him, and then he got up and said his sermon, and it was just a few words. Today in your hearing, the script, scripture passage is fulfilled, is embodied, is made tangible. Today, my pledge card makes all of this tangible and I am here in my giving to put a stop to the body attacking itself so that we can understand what the collect prays for that love is about healing there is no love if it doesn't heal others and self hurt people hurt people we all need healing love this St. Luke's Church is an attack free zone of people with whom I disagree in its big tent inclusiveness it's an attack-free zone of people who annoy me and also with people who are marginal, people who get on my nerves and people who break my heart. So we are called in this stewardship season and you'll get your pledge cards very soon and you'll turn them in on November 15. I invite you to say, I am here with my pledge card to make healing deep because I know that the oneness of everyone and everything is the heart of big love the autoimmune attacks going on right now will not cripple me for I will be audaciously big love and big love always finds a way.
Amen.